All right, happy Hacktoberfest, everybody. So for those of you who aren't aware, Hacktoberfest is a yearly event that encourages people to contribute to open source projects and help them out with uh, some various issues. And it's good because it encourages people, maybe they haven't contributed to open source before, it gets them in by incentivizing them with a free t-shirt right here. So this year, if you submit four pull requests to open source projects, then you get this nice t-shirt right here. And yeah, it's a really cool idea to get people motivated to contribute to open source for the first time. But the problem with it is a lot of people read this and they just hear free t-shirt. So instead of getting a bunch of high quality submissions and a whole bunch of high quality contributions to various projects, a lot of people are just doing the absolute bare minimum that they need to get a free t-shirt. And so I've dug around and found some of the best of the worst uh, pull requests that have been made in the name of Hacktoberfest. So these are a few of my favorites. Uh, so a few of the contributions we've gotten with Hacktoberfest are uh, some great additions to these readmes right here. So as you can see, this Django type form, it just wasn't doing it. So this person added Django amazing type form, which I don't know, you might think it sounds better. But uh, if you don't like that, we also have somebody else who worded it a bit differently, an amazing type form. And if you don't like that, uh, maybe it's a bit too redundant, you could say Django type form, a learning platform. And this one is an amazing Django type form. So many options to choose from with all these amazing pull requests. Besides the amazing Django type form, uh, we also have this readme that was updated. This person didn't think that they were being polite enough with just this boring readme, so they decided to add a thank you down here. Isn't that nice of them? Right here, this is an update to the HTML specification. Now, this 404 not found, that's pretty boring if you ask me, but it gets so much more enthusiasm with 404 not found. Doesn't that just sound so much better? Now, this one was pretty creative right here. It didn't just add amazing or something like that. They just added their name to this project for no reason at all. Of course, in an H1, so you know how important they are. But you just got to admire the self-confidence that it takes to put your name right here in the middle of your project. Now, this right here is a pretty useful contribution. I mean, who would know that uh, this means top and bottom 0.5 rem, and it means right and left 0.75 m? You know, you just wouldn't understand this without this uh, helpful comment right here. So I'm glad that they really cleared it up for us. So this is actually using some secret technique that I haven't actually seen before. Did you know that you can actually loop through classes? I didn't, but uh, now we have a class loop right here. That's a pretty advanced technique right there. And this one right here, they're updating their 404 page. Uh, maybe the link that, maybe this wording right here isn't completely correct. So instead, uh, if this address is correct, uh, maybe they can try again later or check your network connection or maybe they're just not connected to the internet. That's why they're seeing this 404 page. Oh wait, they can't see this 404 page unless they're connected to the internet. Okay, never mind. That wasn't a good one. Okay, so this person right here clearly doesn't know what their own pronouns are. So uh, this person has kindly helped them with uh, fixing their pronouns for them. The correct pronoun is the, of course. I mean, have you ever met somebody with they, them pronouns? Come on, let's be realistic. So this one is just uh, clarifying some things right here. Uh, not found isn't really specific enough, but let's try file is with uh, about seven spaces right here. Yeah, file is not found. All right, that's more specific. And this one, well, they can't even understand this at all. This is Chinese. Okay, I can't understand this either. Well, I mean, even if you can't speak Chinese, you can still improve the code, right? So. Uh, Lots of love from this person. That's pretty nice. And so these are all pull requests added within a six hour period that are all updating the README and the docs with, uh, I'm sure you can guess the quality of their ch fixes and changes that they have here. Keep in mind, this is a project that hasn't been updated for 15 months. There haven't been any commits to it, so it's basically a dead project. But uh, that doesn't stop these people from trying to help out the README with uh, fixing it up with some amazing new adjectives. Well, if updating the README isn't good enough for you, 
then you can always break the whole project by renaming package.json to an amazing project.json, which is going to break the entire project, but uh, I mean, that's of secondary concern. Okay, now this person has made a major mistake. They uh, created a file here that they should not have created. And uh, so, sorry about that. P please improve this. Uh, and don't cancel it, please, because this person really wants their t-shirt. Now this one here is genius. They just took this uh, project and added an MP3 to it. Now this is pretty smart, especially if the track is really good. I haven't actually listened to it yet, but it's probably fire. This is probably a really good way of promoting your mixtape. So if you want to do some promotion, all you need to do is start contributing to open source projects and get it out there. Now as you can imagine, a lot of these pull requests uh, get invalidated or marked as spam. But uh, if that happens to you, if somebody marks your PR as invalid, well, you can just say, no thanks. Who are you to tell me that my PR is invalid? No, it's staying in there. What do you know? And finally, if nobody else is supporting you, you can support yourself, okay? Don't listen to what anybody else tells you. You know, your pull request is amazing. Amazing pull. Just let everybody know um, by writing the same comment three times, and I'm, I'm sure they'll get the message that it's an amazing pull request. Okay, so obviously that's what you don't do with Hacktoberfest. So instead of making a bunch of spam commits like this, uh, I'd still encourage you to, co to contribute to open source, especially if you haven't done it before. Now, it can be kind of overwhelming at first because you're not really sure where to start. Maybe you're not so good at coding. So the idea of jumping into a gigantic repo with uh, tons of code and trying to pick through it and work on something is a little bit daunting for you. But your first pull request doesn't really have to be anything big. It can just be something small but useful. So let me show you my first pull request that I made for an open source project. So this is for WordPress and their Gutenberg plugin. So I was trying to set up something with this, pl with this plugin before and it just wasn't working for me because I went to the documentation and I tried to copy and paste the code, but it just wasn't working. There were a, a bunch of bugs in the code. So I was thinking, okay, this code is definitely wrong. It's not working for me. So I kind of fixed everything myself, uh, pieced it together, and then I wanted to help other people who might have the same problem, you know. So I went into the documentation, which is open source, and I fixed all the bugs, and I submitted a pull request. After I fixed a few issues with the styling, it got approved. So now everybody else that has this problem is going to be helped by my contribution. So that felt pretty good. And this isn't anything big, it's just uh, I was working on my own project and I needed something fixed. So I didn't even have to go out of my way to do this pull request. It was just something that I already needed, so I figured I'd contribute it to, so that other people don't have the same problem. And yeah, if you want to find ways to contribute, just look around some projects that you use a lot yourself. Like for me, I use React Hook Form a lot. And uh, I had this problem where the controller wasn't working after I updated it to the latest version. So it was just breaking my production build for some reason. So I went through the GitHub issues and uh, I tried to figure out what was wrong. Inside the GitHub issues, I found the solution. It's that a bunch of old properties got depreciated in version 6 and this is the new way to do it with a render prop. So I saw a lot of other people have that problem inside the GitHub issues. So maybe if somebody puts a notice up here like uh, this was changed in version 6, these properties are now depreciated, uh, use this instead. Maybe a note up there would be helpful to other people. So yeah, you don't, you don't even need to dig into the code that much. Just, uh, just write something useful here or maybe you could even expand some documentation that's missing. Don't just go through and write amazing on every single readme. But you know, if you could contribute to some documentation, maybe you had to figure it out yourself, but you can teach other people how to do it easier so that other people don't have to go through the same process that you did. That can be useful to a lot of people. So that's really good for your first pull request. And besides that, you can just look through issues of some projects that you frequent and see if there are any ones that you think you can handle. Even if it seems like a big code base, uh, a lot of these, for smaller libraries, really aren't as big as you might think. So it's worth it just to look through the issues and see if something, oh, that sounds like something I can do, and give it a try. But if you really don't have anything, there's a couple of good sites with some easy first issues that you can check out. 
So this is goodfirstissues.com, and you can select your programming language. Maybe you want to do something in JavaScript, and you can find some easy uh, first issues that are good for a beginner. The only problem with this is a lot of other people use the website, so a lot of these are already going to be taken. But if you can find something that isn't taken, then this is a good way to find it. I haven't actually checked out this website too much, but this is another uh, goodfirstissue.dev, so it might be worth it to look on these kind of websites and see if you can find something useful there. All right, so that's actually how to contribute to Hacktoberfest without ruining somebody's project. Obviously, nobody wants a bunch of spam in their repo, so if you can make just some good, high-quality, but small pull requests, you can help out a lot of people. And yeah, if you've never created a pull request before, if you've never contributed before, this is a great first step that you can take and maybe get started into doing some more serious open source work. It's pretty satisfying when you fix something and you know it'll be helpful to hundreds or thousands of other people. So I'd encourage you to give it a shot. And you can sign up here at hacktoberfest.digitalocean.com. Maybe I'll get my shirt this year. I don't know if I'll go through the effort, but you can do it. So give it a go.